So you clicked on this video because you want to build your very own image analyzer chatbot using Streamlit, Olama, and the Lava open source model, all running locally on your own computer. So that's what we're going to do from start to finish. So let's jump into some code. Okay, before we get started coding on our project, we'll need to make sure we have Olama set up correctly on our computers. So if you haven't already, go ahead and navigate to the olama.com website and then go to the download section here. Now I'm on a Mac, so I am going to select the Mac installer. And if you're on Linux, of course, you'll select Linux. And then, of course, if you're on Windows, you'll select the Windows installer. Now, if you are on Windows, it is still currently in preview. I have a separate video down in the description that'll walk you through how to install Olama step-by-step -step on your Windows PC. All the testing I've done with the preview edition has worked fine. I haven't had any issues getting models up and running for me. So now let's go through the installer. Okay, so now I'm in my downloads folder and you can see I have the Olama zip file here and I am going to unzip that. And I am going to now drag the Olama app into my applications folder. Now I am going to go to the applications folder here and then navigate to Olama and double click on it. And it should start running for me. So I'll click open. And now when I go to the very top here, you can see now I have a llama head here and it has the option for me to quit Olama. So that's how I know I've now successfully installed Olama on my computer. So next we'll jump into the terminal and go through a couple of important commands with an Olama and then we'll jump into coding our project so that we can actually use the underlying models we download. Okay, I have the terminal window open now and I'm going to run a few Olama commands just so you're comfortable with how you will install models find models and list the install models that you have. So I'm going to call Olama help and we can see the different commands that we have available to us here. Now, the only commands that we're going to focus on here in this video just to get us up and running is the run command, the pull command, the list command, and the remove command. And that's all you really need to get Olama up and running so you can finish out this coding tutorial. So what I'm going to do next is jump back over to the olama.com website so we can find the models that we're going to use within the coding example. Okay, I'm back over at the olama.com website and you can see up here at the top there is an option for us to click on models here. Now, this section here lists all the available open source models. So there's quite a few open source models available for you to use and download. But the model that we're going to focus on since we're going to use vision in our chatbot is the lava model here. Now this is an open source multimodal model that allows us to have chat based conversations with the underlying large language model, but it can also take in images as input and analyze those images. So that's what we're going to do. So first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and click on this lava model. And you can see we have some information here, what it's related to. We can see that it comes from the Llama family of models. So like uh, Llama 2, Llama 2 uncensored. And then we can see the parameter count is 7 billion. And we can see the quantization being used is 4 bit. And this basically is decreasing the size of the underlying model weight so we can run it locally on lower spec hardware. So that covers kind of some information that you can get here. You can get see the readme further down if you want to get more information around how to make calls to the underlying API and how you can make calls through the prompt or the terminal with your model here. Now, the last thing that I'll focus on here is we can see the different model sizes here in the drop down. I am going to just be using the 13 billion parameter model, but I'll download a few of them so you can see what it looks like in the terminal when we have multiple models listed. Now, in order for us to run the model on our computers, we'll need to run the Olama run command. And then you can see here after that is the model name here. So that's what we'll do next. We'll go ahead and get up and running with this 
model here and give it a test in the terminal before we actually start coding out our chatbot. Okay, I'm back in the terminal now and we're gonna go ahead and run the lava model to see what happens when we make a call to the run command. So I'm gonna type in llama run and the name of the model, if you recall, is lava. And I am going to pull the 13 billion parameter model there. So you'll have to make sure you enter the correct tag at the end to pull the correct model. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter there. And you can see it is now pulling down this model here. So it is roughly 7.4 gigs. So what I'm gonna do is pause, come back once this model is done downloading. Okay, my model has been downloaded onto my computer, but while I was at it, I went ahead and downloaded a couple of more models so I can show you how to run a few more commands. Now, the first command I am going to run here is olama list, which allows us to list the models that have been downloaded onto my computer. So we can see I've downloaded four other, or three other models, including the initial lava 13 billion parameter model. I also downloaded the 34 billion parameter model, and I downloaded another model called Baklava. And this model is similar to Lava, and it uses the exact same architecture, but it's based on Mistral. And then the last model that I downloaded here was Code Llama. So that's how you list out models. Is you just call Olama list, and you can see the list of available models that you have available on your computer. Now, the last command I am going to call here is Olama remove, so rm. So if you no longer are using a model, you can just call the remove command. I installed the code llama model just to show you how I could go about removing a model here. I'm not gonna use this model here, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. Click enter, and you can see deleted code llama. Now, if I run llama list again, you can see I no longer have that. Now, one last command that you can call is olama pull. Now, this is if you just want to pull the model and you don't want to run the model when you actually pull it. So I'm going to call llama and have it. No, it's actually llama 2, I believe. Yep. So I'm pulling down llama 2. It will download onto my computer, and then I will have that as a available model to me. So next, we will test out the Lava 13 billion parameter model. So in order to test our vision model, we're going to need a couple pictures to use. So I'm in my downloads folder. I have a kitten here, and in picture two, I have two puppies here. So we're going to test the lava model to see how accurate it is at identifying items or subjects in the pictures. We're going to hop back over to terminal and actually pass these images to the lava model. Okay, I'm back in the terminal here and I am now going to run our lava model here. So I'm going to run the 13 billion parameter model. And we can see we're presented with a prompt, send me a message. And I can send it just a regular message. What type of model are you? And just ask it a question here. So it gave us a quick, short response here. And so now I want to ask it a question about a picture. So what is in this picture? And I'm going to use the first image and see what kind of response that we get back here. So we can see that it can detect there is a an adorable kitten here laying on its back with its paws up in the air. So it does a pretty good job at identifying what's in the image there. And let's run that against the second picture and see what we get here. And it is giving us output saying two adorable puppies sitting side by side on grass with yellow flowers. So, so pretty accurate in its assessment of what's in the images that we presented to it. So now that we understand how to set up Olama, pull some models, run models in the terminal, let's go ahead and start building out our front end 
web application to interact with the underlying Olama models. Okay, I have my starter project pulled up here in VS Code, and that's what I'm going to be using. Now, if you're not familiar with VS Code and how to set up a development environment, I have a video down in the description on how to get that set up. I will be using Anaconda for my dedicated Python environment. So there's a video down there that walks you through that step by step. And also the completed code is also in the description and the starter project that I will be using here. So if you want to go ahead and clone the starter project, that way you can code along. I definitely recommend coding along. That way you can get comfortable building out solutions like this if you're new to it. All right, so I'll briefly talk about the project structure that I have over here. I have a helper folder with some helper files or classes that I will be keeping some helper functions in. And then I have the main app file. And then I also have a config file where I'll be tracking some different constants that I'll be using throughout the applications. So I just wanted to give you a quick heads up on this is how the project's structured and we will be coding this step by step here. Also, if you're liking the content, feel free to hit like and subscribe. It really pushes the content out to other people who will find this useful for them also. So first thing first, let's go ahead and jump into the config.py file here. So this is the first file that I am going to code up. I do already have some code here. I'm not going to make you watch me type code from start to finish, but I will explain each line of code that I have here. Now, I put three constants in this config class here. The page title is what our page title will be, of course, and this will show up also in the uh, navigation tab. And then the second constant I have here are the models that I will be using throughout the application. So this will show up in the drop down box. So some of this stuff will make sense as we build out the application. And then the last constant here is the system prompt. Now, this system prompt here is what steers the chatbot in a certain direction. So this here just says, hey, you're a helpful chatbot that has access to the following open source vision models. And it references this constant here and you can answer questions about images. So that's basically what the chatbot can do. So this is just our config class so we can easily reference these within our application. So the next thing that we're going to code is we're gonna start coding out our app.py file. Now this is where the bulk of our code will exist to make the application function. Now I've all gone ahead and put the import statements at the top. That way you don't have to type this out by hand. Now, first import statement here is calling streamlit. So this is the user interface library that we'll be using. And I will be referencing the documentation every once in a while just to let you know how I'm doing certain things and why I'm doing it that way. And then we have our import of our config class. And then I have my image helper that pulls in some functions and then my LLM helper that pulls in a couple of functions. All right, so let's start coding out the app file here. Now, again, I'm not going to be typing code here. I will just be pulling it in and explaining each line of code here. Now we can see we have our page title, which references the config page title. So that class that we set the page, con page title constant. And then this here is the streamlit set page config. And now this configures the streamlit page and how the title will show up in the tab. And then also we're going to have a sidebar here. So the sidebar, we're going to set it to initially expand it. So that's why we have this here. And then we have our page title that will appear on the page. Now I am going to just make sure that everything is functioning and working. I'm going to save this file and save this file here. And let's just make sure the application is working before we code on any further. Now I'm going to go up to the top here and select terminal and select new terminal. Again, I am using a dedicated Python environment with Anaconda. So I'm going to type in conda activate streamlit 
underscore env. And this is just what I've called my anaconda environment. I just call it streamlit underscore env. Now, if you don't know how to set up Anaconda and Streamlit in a development environment, go ahead and take a look at the video down in the description. I walk through that step by step. So I'm going to hit enter, and we can see that Streamlit underscore env is now at the beginning of my prompt there. So that tells me I've activated this environment. So now I have access to the different libraries that are in that environment. Now, I've already activated that environment and ran the requirements file here but i do have two dependencies so we rely on the olama library and we rely on the streamlit library now if this was a fresh environment we would run pip install dash r requirements in order to install these dependencies in our dedicated Python environment. See, I already have those installed, so nothing really there for me to do. So you will need to run that if this is your first time running this project. All right, so we're in this environment here. Now let's run streamlit run app.py. Now this is the command that you will run in order to run your streamlit application. So I'm gonna hit enter here and we can see that lava image analyzer shows up here so we can see our page title is showing up on the page so we know we've got everything running now we can code on a little bit further so we're going to go back to our code editor and continue coding our app.py file okay so we're back in the code editor and we're going to continue to code our app.py file here now the next thing we're going to do here is go ahead and add a widget and we call them widgets because that's what they're called in Streamlit in the library that we're using. So we're going to add a markdown widget, and this is just going to allow us to put some text up on the screen here. So it says select an image file to analyze. And next, we have our file uploader widget here. So this allows us to select a file to be uploaded. So we allow users to upload PNGs and jpeg files and we assign it to this upload file variable here so let's jump over the browser really quickly and look at the streamlit documentation okay i'm on the streamlit website here and we're going to go navigate over to docs because we want to see how certain widgets are implemented now i am going to search for file uploader since that's what we're coding here I'm going to select that there and we can see here it allows us to display a file uploader widget within the application here now there's other settings that you can set here you can go to the documentation when you find time to check out the documentation I recommend anytime you're building out a new application and you're unsure about how to use something in a particular library to get comfortable using the documentation here so we can go down here and see how we can implement a basic file uploader here and it displays it down here for us so that's all it is here to the documentation for the file uploader I'll also include a link down in the description so let's jump back over to the code editor okay so we're back in the code editor and let's continue coding out our application Next, let's go ahead and code up the sidebar here. So this will allow us to show the different models that we have available to us here. So what I have here is a streamlit sidebar here. And you can see I have the syntax here with st.sidebar. And then you can see on the next line, it's indented in here. And what that does is it allows us to contain controls within the sidebar. So when you tab over and you're using the with context there, it makes sure that any control that's under here is appearing within the sidebar. So what I have here is a image model, and then I have a ST select box. And this gives us a drop down box for us to select different options from. And you can see here that I had referencing the config.olama models there. And if you recall, 
when we go back over into our config file, we're referencing this here, the three models that we are going to have access to in our chatbot. And that sets this as values within the select box. So that's all it is to that code there. And now let's give our application a quick test and hop back over in the browser and see what it looks like so far. Okay, so we've got our application loaded back up here in the browser. And you can see the application is coming along. Before we only had the title up here. Now we can see we have the markdown with selected image file to analyze. And then we can see we have our file uploader widget loaded on the page, accepting PNG and JPEG files. And then if you recall, we last coded our sidebar here. And the sidebar has the select box here with the different models that we're loading from the config constant. Now, if we select that, we can see we have the lava 13 billion parameter model and we have the lava 34 billion parameter model and we've got the baklava model here available to us. So that's how we set up our initial user interface here. We haven't coded in any type of functionality yet besides just the widgets on the page and the ability to select files here. And so we're gonna go jump back into our code editor and continue coding out our project. Okay, so we're back over in the code editor here, but before we continue coding our app.py file, we'll need to go ahead and code out our helper files. Now the first one I am gonna code out here is the image helper.py here. Now we just have one helper function in here. I'm going to paste this code in here and just briefly talk about it. I have a couple endpoint statements here because we're dealing with um, bytes here. And then the next one here is the pillow library, which allows us to interact with image files here. Now, what you can see here is I'm grabbing the image path being passed through here. So we're getting the image file and we're opening that image file and then we're converting that into bytes here because that's what we're going to need when we're passing this to the underlying lava model. So it expects bytes to come in and not a file path. And then we're just returning these bytes here. So that's all this helper method does here is just converts a file from disk to bytes and then we're going to use that later on in our code. Now, the next file we're going to go ahead and finish out coding out is the LLM helper. And this is just going to have some helper functions in here. That way we don't have to make our code overly verbose in our app.py file. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and code out our analyze image file here. And I did have this here already stubbed out. I'm just pulling the system prompt from the config file. That way we don't have to code it out. And just to kind of refresh your memory, all we're doing is pulling in this text here. All right, so we'll go back to the LLM helper and I'm gonna put the code in here and then briefly talk about it here. So this is the actual meat of our application. This is what is actually going to analyze the file, the image file for us. But again, that is coming in as bytes. And you can see we're creating a variable here called image bytes, and we're calling that helper function that we created in our image helper. And we already have the import at the top here. And we pass in the file path and we get the bytes that represent that image back. And then next here, this is the Olama SDK here. So if we go to the top here, the Olama SDK for Python has a generate function here and that's what we're calling and we can see that we're accepting a model because this function here we're getting the model passed through and we'll uh, dive into that code a little bit further once we go finish up our app.py file and then the question the user's asking about the file we pass that to the prompt and then we can see here we can have it an array of images I'm only passing a single image, but say we wanted to loop through a directory of images and get the bytes that represent those images. We could just pass those in as an array here. And the last 
option that we have here, the last parameter that we're going to set is the stream because we want this to stream back to us like where you see uh, chat GPT streams the content as it's coming back to it. That's what we're going to do here. So that's why we have that set as a stream. And then here we're going to finish coding this stream parser. But So we get this back in chunks. So a stream comes back in chunks of data. So we need a way to parse that out here. So that's all that method is or function is here. So let's go ahead and put the code here. So I'm not going to dive super deep into this code here. It just basically gets the stream of data that's coming back. And you'll see this when we call it in the app.py file. And we break that stream out into chunks. And then we pass the response back here. And that's what the yield statement does here or that keyword does it just passes that back every time it gets a chunk it passes it back to the calling function so that's all it is to this particular file here so we just have some helper functions in here that way we don't make our code and the app.py file overly wordy all right so let's jump back over to the app.py file and continue to code on. Okay, so we're back in the app.py file and we're going to now code up the application so we can gather input from the user. So I'm going to put in this first line of code here. We're going to have an if statement and we're basically saying if there's input in the chat input widget, then assign that input to this chat input variable here. Now, just one thing to call out, st.chatInput is a widget that Streamlit gives us. So we don't have to code out the text box or the button or any type of user input validation. We get that all out of the box with Streamlit. So I just want to call that out really quickly. That way, you, if you're wondering how certain things are showing up on the screen. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of validation here. So if the file has not been assigned to this uploaded files variable here. So if it's none, then we want to throw an error and tell the user you must select an image file to analyze. And then we want to stop executing the application there. So that's what that's doing here. So xt.error throws an error. st.stop stops the execution of the application. So that's what we've got going on there. And let's continue to code on here. Now, the next thing we're going to do is add a status. Now, this is another widget here. So st status allows us to show basically a spinning widget that lets the user know that something's going on behind the scenes here. Now, I'll call off this syntax here. So this is a streamlit specific syntax. So when we put colon red and then wrap something in brackets, it's saying assign this color to this text here. So that's all that's going on there. And then st write allows us to write out output to the screen as plain text. And then we're assigning that to be a orange color there. So that's what we've got going on there. This is just information to let users know something's going on in the background because when we're talking to our back-end model, it's going to take a few seconds for it to respond, and we don't want users thinking that the application hung. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is add the actual function and assign the output that's returned to a variable called stream. So this is just going to be the stream of data that's passed back from the model. And you can see we're just calling the analyze image file, which is just our helper function that we're importing from the LLM helper up there. And the first argument that we're passing through is the actual file and then the model. So the, remember, the model is being assigned from this select dropdown box here. And then the user prompt is coming from the chat input. So that's what's going on there. And let's go ahead and finish out our last piece of code here before we actually test things out. Now, 
So we've got two more lines of code here. So we have stream output, and that's a variable. And so what happens is after the output has been streamed, it's all concatenated together as just one big block of text. But to the user, it's all printed out as it's coming through. And then we have a, another streamlet method here called write stream. Now, this allows us to write a stream of data as it's coming in back to the screen. And then you can see I'm just calling the stream parser function, helper function, and I'm passing this stream into it, and it's just passing that back to the write stream function that Streamlit has built into it. And then the last thing here is we're saying st write, so just write some text out to the screen, and we're going to make it green, and we're going to say done analyzing image file. So we've essentially coded up our complete application here, but we still need to do some testing to make sure everything is working properly. So I'm going to make sure I save all my files here, and then we're going to hop over into the browser and test everything out, make sure we don't have any errors or bugs. Okay, we're back in the browser with our completed app, and as long as we coded everything correctly, everything should function fine for us. Now I'm going to go over here to the sidebar and select the dropdown. And you can see I have the 13 billion, 34 billion parameter lava models loaded here in the dropdown, and I also have the baklava model that I loaded. Now one thing to note, you will be, have to be sure you've downloaded those or pulled those models in the olama command line because just because they're here doesn't mean they're on your system. So I just want to remind you of that, or you could get an error. All right, we're going to select the Lava 34 billion parameter model here. And then let's select, let's select image two. Let's ask it, what's in this picture? What's in this picture? And you can see it's processing it based on the output, showing us that spinner sand is analyzing the image. And now it's giving us some output here, it's streaming this out like you were using chat GPT. And then it tells us done analyzing image. So that's really all there is to building your very own image analyzer chatbot running locally. So remember, these models are running locally. We're not having to depend or rely on a third party to actually run our models. So if you like this video here, you'll probably like the other video that's showing on the screen, which shows you how to build your very own uncensored chatbot using Llama 2. So no censorship or anything. It's just running completely local on your computer, and you can ask it pretty much anything you can think of. So check out that video if you like this video. And again, thanks for joining. I appreciate you staying to the end, and hope to see you in the next video.